Hello, everyone. Welcome to the North and Artist Conversation. My name is Mark Kelly. I am your um, your host. I really need to think of another word for that. What's another word for host? Uh, concierge, maybe? Con- no, no, no. Um, producer Andrew and editor Lee are my consiglieries. Um, that's a mafia thing. Um, not that we like the mafia. Well, we could be, but we're not. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is a first for us in terms of a podcast guest. So if you're listening to this podcast, uh, first off, thank you very much. We appreciate you. If you're listening or watching, man, it's great to have everyone back. Um, you know, uh, 2024 has been going really well. Um, we're, we're doing this and it is uh, very wet and very cold outside. Uh, it's not, not nice at all. It is um, middle of June, so uh, yeah, winter is upon us. Um, but this is a this is a, a first for us in terms of uh, podcast guest. We welcome anyone that's artistic and creative. And um, today's guest uh, was absolutely no exception. Now I have to make sure I get this right because uh, it, I I never want to offend anyone. So they um, are a oh, I've got to make sure I get this right as well. Drag King. Editor Lee, does that sound right? Can you just throw me a thumbs up if that's correct? Yeah, I got a thumbs up. Okay, cool. Drag King. And they came as their uh, persona, uh, which was Victor E. Dance. And just super cool. Super cool. Um, Such a a lovely person to talk with. And I'm going to throw it in my camera. Um, And super cool. We had a lot of laughs. The rapid fire uh, ended up becoming mildly inappropriate. Um, so if you haven't watched that on our Facebook and Instagram page, I highly recommend checking that out. Uh, where the bleep is, um, let's just say if you're good at lip reading, you'll figure it out. Um, so uh, Han uh, is our guest. And um, man, they were so cool. Uh, just, you know, there was a, a real a real nice chemistry. Things kind of flowed um, very interesting. And just what a what an interesting journey they've been on throughout their whole life it is very much like okay so you know we're going to start off here and then we're going to here we're going to here then we'll go back here we're going to do here we'll do a round and round and round circle and then just landing up where um they are now it's just yeah it's amazing but so many cool things have happened along the way and you know listen to the podcast you'll you or, or watch podcast you'll you'll see what i mean some cool things um, coming up so I tell you what I'll, I'll shut up because I, I often ramble um, and let's sit down and have a, pon- uh, a conversation with Han who was that? Is that you? I thought I put it on silent. No, I didn't. Please make sure your me. phone's in airplane mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not even just on silent. All right. well, Air, and, well, and, and please no, make sure your, no your tray tables are in the upright and locked position. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so we don't have a set start. So it's just kind of, there'll be some random shit and Lee will just edit it accordingly, which is great. So um, now, oh. Thank you very much for coming into the Northern Artist Conversation. I do appreciate this. Now, normally, I would introduce our guests by their name. But this is going to be a little bit different. So, would you please like to introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers? Well, my drag name is Victor E. Dance. Victor E. Dance? Yes. Okay. Vic- like Victory Dance. Like right. You don't need pants for the Victory Dance. Do you know okay. what that's from? No, I just don't need pants anyway. Okay, yeah. I prefer shorts. Um, <laughs> okay, so you're you're in now. We, we were talking about this before. This is your persona. Yeah, so okay. like a drag character that I've created. I actually um, renamed myself the uh, this year or late last no la- last year right. um, as as Victor E Dance. Yeah. Cool. And your non persona name. Uh, my human life name, my muggle name. Oh, yeah, God, go uh, on. <laughs> um, Hanariki. Hanariki. Yeah. Hanariki. Or uh, Han for sure. Han. Yeah. Uh, wait, what is it? What does it sound like a? 
Sounds like a Fast and the Furious character, Victor Hahn. Oh, I, I often go like Han Solo, but with more force. Yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, because he didn't have any. Yeah, nah. But Leia did. Mm. Leia had to force. I think, uh, no. No, Han didn't have the Schwartz. Mm-hmm. Um, no, Hanariki is the name that I actually chose for myself when I came out as non-binary. Okay, yeah, yeah and right. It, it means um, naughty and mischievous. Okay, so devilish and okay, playful, impish, uh, like an imp. No, 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 not like an imp as in the character. Impishly playful is someone that is like not over the top, but someone who's like just a little bit naughty, a little bit sassy. Hmm. No. Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> What's it, cool? It depends on the audience, I think. Right. Yeah, okay. I reined it in for Rainbow Youth. <laughs> right. Okay. And for our podcast guests as well. Oh, we'll see. Well, yeah. I I'm might. Sorry, I right. might send it to my mum, so I won't swear. She doesn't like right. swearing. Swearing is acceptable. Yeah. So if you want to let fly, let fly. Um. Yeah. You know, we don't really have a lot of limitations on here, so, um. You know, I kind of follow your lead. If you drop an f bomb. Be rest assured that I'm just going to throw them all out there super fast. Um, I swear like a champion. Editor Lee will attest to that. I'm sure she's nodding her head in the background. Um, so thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Um, uh, am I best to call you Victor or Han? Uh, oh, let's just go with Han today. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah, let's, let's go with Han. Because we're talking all about the... the um, we're talking about you as a person, yeah, right? We're not yeah. talking... Uh, you know, I'm not going to refer to you in the second person as the character that you uh, have come as. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, okay. Good call. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I have them from time to time. <laughs> right. Um, but for those of you that are listening to this podcast, um, Han has turned up um, in... Drag. Yeah, what, but how Generally. would you describe your your outfit? These are actually just my normal clothes. <laughs> no, it's more my face that's the drag. Part. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh no, I I haven't worn this um, so leather, you've got a vest leather vest other than other than when I'm in drag. Right. Okay. And these things are pretty cool. They're like, what are they? They they like they like buttons, but they're not. They're like clip on across there. I've worn this without a shirt on underneath, just with like a hairy chest. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, nice. See, they would be good for someone like me who's fat and couldn't get it the whole way across. Very nice. Yeah, there is still a limitation. Oh yeah, probably way too snug for me. Um, so, uh, but you've also got and you. What I love is you took the time to do. The spiky, uppy, quaffed rainbow here. <laughs> um, and you've got, um, what have we got? We've got red, orange. Uh, you've essentially got Roy G. Biv, um, which I think is very cool. And it's the only way I remember the, the rainbow colours. Yes. Oh, should I do it? Try and get <coughs> oh, yeah, go on. We'll, the... we'll try and pick up the shot Even in the white. You, in you the made white. me wear headphones. I didn't make it. I said it was optional. <laughs> I know. And the podcast is off to a roaring start. We were just going to give each other shit. Um, okay. Now, this is a character that you've uh, I, 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 not created, but you've adapted over time, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a it's a drag name that I've uh, eventually given myself when I um, uh, when I first started doing like drag MC kind of performances. I often had a had a character that I was going as. Right. Yeah. And then um, this, I think it was the first Fringe Festival actually when we did the first Queerioke event at. Um, I'm the, sorry. What? The Grand. <laughs> Queerioke, like you know, I know the best karaoke, kind. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we did it like a Queerioke takeover because you know they've got karaoke at the Grand all the time. No. Yeah. Well, they do. Welcome oh, wow. to Fung at A. Yeah, I mean, I've only been here eight years. To be fair, I think I've been out twice night clubbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we did like, uh, yeah, we called it a karaoke takeover. There was no cost to us because they had the karaoke on any anyway. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. we talked about it um, with the grand manager at the time, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, just put up some signs and advertised it and put up a flag on the night. The locals loved it. They had some funny comments and. Um, and yeah, questions as well. But yeah, it just really lapped it up, and yeah, we all just turned up and had a had a gay old karaoke time. <laughs> yeah, gay old time. Yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, should I should I go as this character or this one? Or I've, I've actually been thinking of just going as Hans, 
and it'd be be like a man version of me and my friend, right. my friends were like yeah yeah do that one oh, um, crazy so yeah actually that was Kara and Sandy Lee do you know them they're pretty awesome artists you should get them uh, on ah maybe you can <laughs> hook a brother up with an assist yeah probably that'd be good uh, yeah so we always they... want well, guests are cool man we love guests yeah. um okay so let's go i always like to sort of discover the journey because you can really kind of just you know learn more about the the artist and where they've ended up now let's go right back like, i mean all the way back when you were growing up was were you surrounded by a house of creativity no we, we, okay <laughs> okay uh Awesome. That's an orphan artist conversation. Thanks very much. <laughs> Later. We'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> it's been real. This is all me. Yeah. Um, My dad's a lawyer. Um, oh, wow. Okay. And, well, so he's kind of like he, half the time he does lawyer stuff and then other other time he's like, I'm so sick of this. I'm going to go and work in the mines. So he also drives like massive trucks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And he kind of goes through phases of, right. of doing one job and, and then the other. Because, yeah, criminal defense lawyer he gets over it. I can't say I blame him. Mm. Um, and mum? Uh, well, after we, yeah, she brought us up, stayed at home for a long time. Oh, right. mind you, she was like a flower farmer. She, we had Sandersonias and calla lilies when I was a young person. Um, be- between the age of five to ten, we lived on a flower farm in Porto Tea. A of, flower farm? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, we exported the Sandersonias, Sandersonias to um, Japan, and yeah, I'm not Holy sure where shit. the calla lilies went, but uh, yeah, she kind of did that sort of stuff, and then um, after we all, you know, went to school and that sort of thing, yeah. she um, she retrained as a teacher, and then didn't really cut it there, and went and worked at Winstone Aggregates and quarrying until she retired recently. So, wow. Yeah. The, from plants to teaching to quarries. Yeah. It's so no, not really creative. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Uh, now, uh, uh, but in, fact, in saying that, yes. Um, what so about siblings? When, yeah, yeah. So when when we um when we were like teenagers, uh, so uh, no, let's go. Me and so I have two sisters. Right. And we used to make up lip syncs and dances and you know stuff like that. We had my mum. My mum's from England and her brother was coming over to New Zealand to, yeah. to visit. And we would like make up a dance and um and do it. And it was say lovey actually bewitched um in the lounge. And oh my god, the Irish yes. <laughs> With the tin whistle. Man, I remember that song. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we used to do that kind of stuff. And then when we moved into town, um, mum took us to rock and roll dancing lessons. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that was when it was um, at the Cobham Oval before the warehouse is where it is now. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Um, and we used to enter competitions, never won them, but, you know, we'd enter and train and dance. And um, I always danced the male part then with my, with my two sisters and... Um, Really? Yeah. Yep. Um, it, it, any particular reason? Did was it something that you gravitated towards? I like towards? leading. Or or was it that your sisters were like, nope, it's not us. Uh, it's gonna no, be you. I've always been a big person. Like I'm taller than my people. Uh, yeah, even grow, growing up, I was always tallest and right, um, okay. and and quite overweight as well. And the and rock and rock and rolls a bit like throwy aroundy and um, oh yeah and that kind of stuff. And yeah. so yeah, I just much preferred the role of like leading the the girls, spinning them around, making them look pretty, throwing them around. You know, um, lots of the other kids, like the younger kids, really enjoyed the throws. So I you know I ended up right, doing, okay. doing a lot of jumps and playing and you know that sort of thing. And it just it worked better than than having me try and so take you were the, the chucker as opposed to the chucky exactly right wow okay and that was obviously sort of where you felt most comfortable yeah 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 and actually in a recent um dra- well when i say recent and like a a drag show that we put on in like 2021 2020 yeah sort of post-co- 2021 post-COVID, yeah, yeah post-covid okay. um uh, both of my sisters danced in a number, an Elvis number with me on stage <laughs> in drag. Yeah, and we, we actually called the Rock and Roll Club to be like, you guys got any petticoats that we can borrow? Because, yeah. you, know, you know, they're like, but we've got, we had some old skirts from when we used to dance together as oh, teenagers that cool. they wore. And yeah, Little Sister, we did Little Sister. Little Sister. <laughs> yeah. Nice, man. That's so cool. The growing up um, in school. 
so primary school, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how was that for you? Like, were you academic? Did you were you sporty? Were you just leave me alone? I'm Nigel, no mates. Uh, nah, I I was like I've always had a numbers brain. I've always been like some maths, a right? maths whiz, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like in high school, I actually so I did school C. Um, yeah, and I got none nine. of this levels. Yeah, oh, years rubbish. Yeah, so so during fifth form, Fuck I changed. Yeah. Yes! I changed school halfway yes! through. We were actually the first year of calling it years, Ugh. so I can I can transition between the two very I easily. Ain't transitioning but... between shit. It's, <laughs> it's bloody fifth form, sixth form, seventh yeah. form. Well, so during fifth form, I spent a couple of months not going to school because I, uh, well, I got into a fight. Um, was someone who was picking on me. Right. And I finished the fight. And so I got suspended. And me and my friends were all like, what the hell to the school? Because nothing happened to the other one who yeah, yeah, yeah. got the beating. Yeah. And so... Or who started it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who started yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, is, is the, was the point. And yeah, and so when my suspension lifted, I didn't go back to school. Like, mum would drive us to school and drop us all off at the big tree. Yeah. Um, and we'd all go to our various schools. And a couple of months later, she got a call from Mrs. Cooper. Oh, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who, she was the deputy principal at the time, and, and she was the principal there when I went back and actually did some work at the school. Right, yeah. Um, but, yeah, to say, like, what, why haven't they been to school in two months? And mum's like, what the hell? And so, yeah, went along and, and dragged me along there and, anyway – ended up moving me and I went to I went out to Pompalia halfway through okay. and we did some some math stuff that you know I'd already done during the year and mm-hmm. anyway long story short I got 95% school C maths after not trying and then so they let me skip six form maths and I did bursary calc and stats during six what? form what yeah I know a eh? but nerd <laughs> <laughs> what the hell <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I went to school to eat my lunch and watch movies because I had a drama, but what, nerd? <laughs> I got 44. Yeah. It's just one off passing. Apparently 45 was a pass. And I was like, pfft, maths, I don't need to study. 95? Yeah. Geek. Right. Although I say yeah, that because so I'm jealous. I, I passed the bursary ones, but like not with great marks because, you know, I'd skip six form was, is, maths is pretty... It's intense, right? Uh, well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you learn that goes towards both calc and, and stats. So I was kind of like catching up on all that yeah. stuff. Because um, calc, I mean, yeah. calc is, is tough. Mm. I I did stats in sixth form and I struggled with it. And But calc was for like the super, super brainy guys. You know, the guys that have gone on, man, who, who did calc when I was at high school? Oh, I, I mean, I'm not from here. I'm from Gisborne, so... I'll say names and you'll be like, mm-hmm. And I'll be like, fuck, I don't know. Um, yeah, man. Like, yeah, so it was, it was a really yeah. interesting combo, though, because I, I had that going on and I also had the, you know, being kicked out of school thing and, you know. Uh. It's so weird that you got <laughs> the, you know, the school essentially turned around and said, well, you're not allowed to stand up for yourself. <laughs> you meant to just take being bullied. Yeah, well, pretty much. So every year of high school, I would have to mess a kid up for everyone to leave me alone. Now, I can rattle them off. Alistair Jenkins uh, (laughs) in science, um, he was always such a giant asshole. I ended up grabbing his head and smashing it into his uh, chemistry science book. Uh, Bloody face. I got left alone. Um, Leon Spin. For fourth and fifth form, decided he was just the man. Uh, he ended up almost uh, wearing a desk as a head accessory. Smart guy. Um, and then oh, well, a couple of others. <laughs> yeah, violence, all boys school. Um, uh-huh. yeah. Well, so I went to a school that was rugby and cricket. Mm-hmm. And I played badminton and a drama. So I don't really fit in. Mm-hmm. You know, I tried cricket, I was meh at it, tried rugby, and I got sent off because, so I loved wrestling at the time, apparently you're not allowed to tackle someone with a clothesline. No. Yeah, I didn't know that. 
but I took the guy down. We got the ball. The other guys, we, we went and scored a try. And it was fine. But apparently that, holding your arm out and just running straight at someone with a clothesline around the throat is illegal. <laughs> I digress. Um, so, yeah. Traumatic. <laughs> high school. <laughs> life. Yeah, but it was during high school that I um, started doing theatre. So, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So I did uh, North and New Theatre summer season of 2001. Okay. Yeah. That was my. That was my. Uh, yeah. First kind of, um, got the bug, and yeah. Then following that, got involved with Whangarei Theatre Company, and mm-hmm. at the time they had a junior theatre group each, oh, each yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. They don't do that so much anymore. It's it's just North and New Theatre focuses on the young people, but. You know they have they have shows for young people, but yeah, that yeah. weekly class thing is right. Yeah, okay. what are they doing? Frozen. Yeah, 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 and they did the Shrek one, and they did yep. the Moana. Yeah. Yes, they did. Oh, I forgot about Moana. Yeah, my mm. son was involved in Moana. Oh, my nibbling was my um my sister's child. Oh right, mm. yeah, yeah. He uh, um uh before yeah, my son's just been bullied all the way through primary and stuff like that. So he had an interest in doing theatre, but he didn't want to be on stage. He wanted to be backstage. So he like helped build the sets and stuff like that, oh, cool. which was cool. Um, he got a lot out of it. Um, he now does Brazilian jiu-jitsu because he was sick and tired of kids beating the shit out of him. <laughs> no one messes with the bitty wall. <laughs> wow, I wonder where he gets that stuff from. Uh, not me. Well, I'm in clothesline. Oh, he does love you wrestling. You were just telling us I, about beating up kids at school. Look, it was one a year. To keep them off your back. It was one a year. <laughs> Please, feel free to dish it back. I love this. Um, so, from, uh, you know, if you are if you started doing drama at high school, was, mm. was there any creative output kind of, before that, were you doing like anything else, or were you just like? Uh, well, the first time m- I dressed in life. drag was actually in um, form two for you. Oh wow! Oh no, form one. Okay. Year seven for everyone else. Um, I love how you can do that. <laughs> I got to count anyway. <laughs> um, we yeah, we, you know, you have socials. It's like intermediate. Yeah, first yeah, year yeah. Intermediate. So yeah. yeah, you have socials, and we did like letters. For the theme, like each form class had a different letter. I think it was the n- name of our form teacher. Or I don't even know, but um, yeah, we we had um M, and I was I went as a mobster. I like wore one of my dad's pinstripe suits. I got a gun and put it, you know, like a toy gun. And right. I used my mum's um eyeliner and drew drew a mustache on. And oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like That's flipped crazy, back my man. hair. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And then the, um and then in high school, I went to a couple of so. We used to have a YFC ball, um, so there was like the high school balls, but then there was like this one where anyone from any balls could come from, and it was run by YFC, Youth for Christ. Oh, yeah, okay, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I went along to that um, in si- both sixth form and seventh form dressed in drag. Um, and like a, a Youth for Christ. Past, yep. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't name myself Jesus. But um, I, yeah, so the f- first year I just like slicked my hair down, put a hat on, had yeah. some sunnies and went with my mate who also wear, wore sunnies and stuff. And the thing was Barbie and Ken and we went as gay Ken. I I didn't know I was queer then, but um, there were so many signs. Uh, and then the year after that, huh. I had dreads and just like... Yeah, you had dreads? Went, yeah, went along as dreads. And I was standing in line to get some photos like, um, and mentioned to my mate who was with me, said, said something and this this chick in front of us just turned around and just like, oh, with a wide eyes. Because I was like, oh, I forgot to talk in my man voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you, okay, oh, man. So you, you kind of knew early on. Well, you didn't know. Nah, I'd never heard of a drag king. I'd never heard of a drag king. I, yeah, not until... I pro- probably not until I moved back back up here to Whangarei, like less than ten years or about ten years ago that I oh, wow. that I heard about dra- like drag kings were even a thing, yeah. you know, because I knew that I liked to do it, <laughs> and um and I and I did it for like theatre and stuff too yeah. a lot, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. There's there's a lot of that, it's, um, yeah, uh, especially with like not not too many men. Or, or or young boys getting into theatre. There's lots of male roles going, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to take them. <laughs> yeah. So with the 
you know, w- with the discovery of the drama and the acting side of things, mm. combined with the dressing more masculine? Yeah. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah. Or um, just, yeah. Cro- or cro- like, yeah, cross-dressing, I is guess. It? Um, yeah. Well, until it, it, it leans more into the drag side when it becomes more like... Yeah, performative and whatnot. Yeah, but um, okay. So, so uh... <laughs> this is gonna get interesting. As a cis white male, um, and and being old, yeah, uh, not that old, um, but being older than the two people in this room, um, drag is essentially that's quite a, a larger than life. Yeah, Flame so thing. Is, would, would it be fair to say it's like a caricature? Yeah, kind of. So it's like, um, I guess, yeah, larger than life, flamboyant, feminine is that drag queen. Okay, sort so it's the aspect. drag queen, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then so, um, and then so you have the same sort of thing, but with a masculine sort of right um, aspect. So and and often you'll see drag kings who are very you know like makeup orientated and yep. um you know they they look very much like a drag queen. But I don't do too much makeup. Like I mostly just glue stuff to my face. Right. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, um, like I, I can and I do sometimes, or like little bits, or I get, or I actually more more likely to get someone else to do the the makeup part. Right. Okay. Yeah. So would that character? <laughs> I don't know why I thought of it, but as soon as you said glue stuff on my face and makeup, I instantly thought of that meme, Giga Chad. Oh, do editor lead you know Giga Chad? No, oh, fuck, I'm old. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Hans, mum. Didn't <laughs> she's gonna tell me off later? Um, Giga Chad is is um is kind of a hyper hyper uber alpha male type. Oh yeah, dude. It's a picture. It's a dude with like this most ridiculously chiselled jawbone. It's not a human person. It's an AI generated thing. Um, so for you being a drag king. Not dragging, drag king, because that's what <laughs> yeah. I thought. That's what I thought you said initially. Dragging. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, what are you dragging? <laughs> but so drag king. So your character of Victor. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to think about who he is as a character, who who is Victor as a character? Like, does he have a backstory, or is he just like on stage, like? manly man he's kind of salacious he's like uh you know like every everyone wants me kind of vibe you know like right. the, look at my 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 he, you know chest hair and 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 my pelvic thrusts and my uh, you know and my and my yeah. you know and just like everyone's best friend fantasy is sort of right. is sort of the the role that that gets played out on stage okay yeah. um and oh wow okay right see i it's funny as soon as you said chest here i instantly thought of the Bee Gees. oh yeah yeah you know saturday night fever with the big gold medallions and the the two buttons down where it's all open and you're showing the yeah yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah she should probably undo another button because <laughs> you brought the character to life which is great um now how so much like you know, um, like all characters, you know, um, when we when we take the mask uh, off, um, how diametrically opposed is Victor from Han in real life? Not very. Really, <laughs> really. So you walk. So in your regular life, you walk around with the pelvic thrust. Uh. Quite, um, not when I'm working. Okay, <laughs> I'm I, a youth worker. Oh, right, so, yeah. Probably so, not best to lead with your crotch. Yeah, no, no. Um, purse first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a joke. Awesome. joke. <laughs> um, so, so essentially, the Victor is uh, an amplification. Yeah, a ma- masculinization and amplification of my sort of like playful, confident. Um, yeah, uh, 
look at me, look at me side. Right, which okay. Is, which is often still like quite a big part of my personality too. I'm like, I'm I'm extroverted and like, uh, you know, I'm a networker and um, yeah, want to get to know people. and Nice. Yeah. So you sort of figured things out that you were... What do we say? Uh, oh, you were you were cross dressing. <laughs> yeah, well, I get I I only well, yeah, say that because yeah. I didn't know what a drag yeah, yeah, king yeah. was like. Yeah. So how did that did that was there any issues with that at school? No. Or no. was it just and like, like this is who you are? I didn't do it at school, and so, like I did it at, at occasions. You know, like, right? Okay. There was the social, and then there was these two balls in high school. Yeah. And then right. like, and then because when I was rock and roll dancing with my sisters, mm-hmm. it was um. We they still put me in a skirt, you know. It was still like yeah, like that. Okay. Um. So we would enter like what they called same sex competitions, where the two of us. Oh would right, dance together. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and then so. And when when I was in theatre, if I was to play a a a, bo- a guy, you know, it was just acting. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it wasn't until I moved like back to Whangarei, um, towards the end of my twenties, um, and got involved with the Queens of the Ray, actually. Oh, I've never heard of Queens of the Ray. Queens of the Ray is a group of drag queens. Okay. Or was they? They're not currently. Uh, uh, well, a couple of them still do still do things here and there. Right, okay. um, Rachel Diamond's one of them. You've had her on. Yes, here. yes, we yeah. have. Tyler Matheson, lovely Ms. Diamond. Um, yeah, uh, Vincent Nathan is another one who I was thinking would be really good to jump on here. Yeah, and, it's, been, um, it's so and fascinating, Zia. man. Yeah. Yeah, and Zia Burkhart, and actually the first the first Kings the Queens of the Ray show. Yeah. Was actually. Um, Charlie and and Micah and Nicole and um yeah so so not those ones and I was supposed to MC that show but I hurt my back and so didn't end up I I ended up going along and I um I did jump on stage at some point but um but yeah uh I I got involved with them and and MCing the shows right, as, a, okay. as opposed to doing an act yep right. um yeah and so that was when I would have this character like um my I think my favorite one was when I MC'd as Elvis. Um, and I had three different costume changes, and I did the voice all night. And on the next day, I did not have a voice, but yeah. I did. Yeah, and I, um, yeah, just played with that. Yeah, T- Tim Bell actually does this. Did the sound and sound and lighting for oh, a lot of really? our shows. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool, man. So yeah, um, yeah, it was through them um, that I that I kind of yeah started exploring the the art of drag, I guess. Yeah. Now you've mentioned it a couple of times. You moved back to Whangarei. Mm. Where were you oh. during the Sea of Wilderness? <laughs> I spent eight years of my twenties in Auckland, so not, oh, right. not far. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's yeah. still outside of Whangarei, right? <laughs> yeah. Producer Andrew has never been outside of Whangarei. What? Yeah. Don't even. Editor Lee has producer Andrew ever been outside of New Zealand, like for a holiday? I don't think he has, has he? He's never talked about it. Producer Andrew, mate, we need to get you overseas on a holiday. That's true, yes. Yeah, we took, I, 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 I took a few of the guys down to Auckland um, to go see June Part 2 at IMAX. And he was, was like, whoa, big lights. Um, yeah, it was a big, big thing. So it probably wasn't that bad. I'm still like that in Auckland, especially like walking down K Road. I'm like, oh my God, it's so gay. <laughs> And it's so yeah, because it's so funny because I remember when I used to go down K Road and it, it it was record stores and op shops and a lot of like for for me you know, I I I found some amazing yeah because I I still collect CDs because I'm old and physical media will never die, um, but it was just it's yeah just seeing it transform over the years has been wonderful. It's been really, it's been really cool to see, and you know how you've got um, K Road, and then you've got the, is it the bridge where the bus stops are? Mm-hmm. Just after that, before you get to the the pond snobby, mm-hmm. um, there's a, a cafe, open on the right hand side. Merge. Oh, okay. Merge Cafe. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to Merge Cafe here. Um, they feed the homeless people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and every time I'm in Auckland on a weekday, I'll go in, and you can actually buy someone meals. 
Ah, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's just a nice little thing I've been doing for the last eight, nine and a half years. Yeah. So, anyway, I digress. What led you to Auckland, though? Youth work. Re- I, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, well, because, um, yeah, in high school as well, I got involved with the Catholic Church and became right. a youth leader mm-hmm. there. And um, one of the priests who went down to work at a youth workplace in Auckland came yep. back up and was like, did you know you can do youth work as a job? And I didn't. I'd left school um, and just chosen not to go to uni and got a job in, like, admin real estate up here and stay, going to the youth group and going to theatre yeah, and, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And so when I found out that – because we didn't have youth workers employed up here at that point. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, yeah. And I was like, no, I didn't know that was a jo- that could be a job. So I went down there, studied youth work through Praxis, worked with Logos and um, – yeah, for about six years. And then when I left there, I did a year of full immersion te reo Māori. And wow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, best year. Like, I, I, I definitely highly recommend doing learning Māori that way because, um, yeah, you get out what you put in and those once a week classes just weren't cutting it. Like, yeah. You know, you can only get to a certain point um, rather than using it every single day. But, yeah, and obviously since leaving there, my, my Māori, my reo has dropped right back. Um, but I'm still, like... I'm still probably around about where my goal was to be, you know. Oh, okay, I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, with the youth work, I just, I really loved working like in Pangaru or um, at Hatopetera, you know, all the all the Maori yeah, uh, wow. kaupapa that we did. Yeah. Um, but there was something lacking because I didn't fully get it, you know. Yeah. Like, and I, yeah, and so that's why I went and did that, and then, yeah, worked at a at, at another Maori organisation before, yeah, coming coming back home. What brought you back home? Well, I, so within that eight years, I also got married and divorced. And Whee. Yeah, and, um, and you know, with that comes a lot of ups and downs. And I was just at yes. this point, I was just at this point where I, I wanted a job that I didn't have to care about, you know, like I was finished doing the youth, I was like, youth workers, like, you know. You give a, you you give give a lot give, of yourself, give, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was just like, and I like, I was down in Auckland. I was like, oh yeah, um, it's so good. I've got family and friends up in Whangarei and up in Whangarei. I'm like, oh no, it's all good. My people in Auckland, you know, and I'd actually isolated myself from both oh, yeah. groups. Okay. So I was like, nah, man, I just need yeah. to go home and, you know, just just do something that I don't care about. I was like, I'll oh, just get a job in a pub or something and whatever. And <laughs> yeah. I told my boss, yeah. my old boss that I was coming back and he immediately offered me a job in admin again. Yeah, um, nice. So yeah, went, went into that. And then I actually um, supported my brother and his wife to buy the Butter Factory. Um, and uh, they took me on as their event manager. So then I was booking the bands, doing the promo. Wow. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah nice. Now they uh, they still have the butter factory? Or no, that, no, 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 no. No, because it got sold, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, uh, a few years ago, yeah. yeah and now right. it's actually back on the market again. I think it's like about four or five years ago. Like it was quite a while oh, ago wow. that it sold. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it went, okay. it's gone so fast. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It feels like only a couple of years ago I moved up here. Yeah, but we were doing like the dirty words spo- spoken poetry spoken word poetry nights with Vincent Nathan yeah. um, and Brett Rice, who you've yeah, met on here. Yeah, hey, Brett. Yeah. yeah, man. And, um, yeah, and, like, the comedy uh, the comedy club started there with Ollie. Yep. Um, yeah, so we were doing those kind of, like, community events that I, oh, I really loved. So, and they've, yeah. they've kind of mo- moved on away away from Butters now yeah. with their new focus. Yeah, uh, a mate of mine, former guest Michael Bota, mm. um, had been at Butter Factory on quite a few occasions. Mm. Um when you were in Auckland doing the youth work, did you spend a lot of time in the uh, drag culture scene? No, nah, not at all. No, really? Nah, nah. I was like full on in the Catholic culture scene. Far out. Yeah, okay. Man. My wedding was an hour and a half mass with communion and everything. Like, like was... the, the wafer and stuff? Nah. Wow. Yeah. Far out. Yeah. So okay. So this is so this is really interesting, right? Because um, you you do get a lot of people, a lot of creatives that they're either creative the whole way through their life, or they have like a, a big gap mm. where they just where they no, where nothing happens. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say nothing happened. Like I was doing youth work. Youth work in itself is like creative and and expressive and stuff, yeah, especially. Right. And s- some of that role was actually like 
bringing mass to life. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a Catholic mass. Yes. Yeah, so the it it can be kind of dra- not not draggy in a good way. <laughs> Draggy in a boring way. It can drag on. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when we did youth masses, yeah. it was about you know bringing the scripture to life. It was about having great music. It was about you know welcoming people in. And and what I've what I've learnt through event management is that's what we were doing. We were doing event management. We were putting right. these gigs yeah. on. You know, yeah. we were making sure people were in the right places at the right time for the you know for for things to happen. We were decorating the place. We were you know getting creative with things. So not yeah. So not so much in a creative industry. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, um, I mean, uh, the Youth for Christ stuff. Oh, I never really got involved with them, but because I, I remember at school they would turn up and they would have mm. like these massive performances. Yeah, and they were like amazing musicians and brilliant singers. And they mm. always had like really good gear, and they just they went hard. Yeah. Um, and then it would get to the end where it'd be like, "Hey guys, thanks for coming out." We'd like to talk to you about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and everyone would be <laughs> gone. Um, so I don't necessarily mean that side of things, but um, you know, it was kids putting on shows for kids, and yeah. it was just so in- in- in amazing, and it stuck with me for all those years. Um, okay, so you kind of devoted your time more to that. You come back to Whangarei, mm. and then you you do your your, your mundane job. Yeah, yeah. You you, and- you, you turn up. You can clock in, clock out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and get on the piss. <laughs> right. <laughs> on the chop. Yeah. Um, and then was there sort of a point in time where you started re-entering? Yeah, so I, well, it it was pretty soon after I moved up, actually, that I started, I went back to Whangarei Theatre Company. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, just yeah. auditioned for, you know, whatever show they had coming through. I think the first one I did when I came back was The Boyfriend. But then, yeah, we did hairspray as well, and oh, hairspray, yeah, yeah, and yeah. um, and hairspray. I actually played three different characters, and two of them were male. So I got right. to do the whole yeah drag thing. Oh, actually, in the boyfriend, I played a um a police officer, a male police officer, and then a drag ca- a queen. Oh, so, wow! So I was like the police officer in drag. Yeah, yeah. so it was it was, yeah, um, friend of my um was the director for that, and yeah, that's, we had a lot that of fun. That's really with it. cool. But, yeah, so. So I think um, pretty much immediately getting back into Whangarei Theatre Company and bringing the drag aspect to the stage, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, and yeah, that's kind of where I reconnected with the with people who were involved with Queens of the Ray and yeah, got in in through the through the connections with theatre and the Butter Factory and yeah, yeah oh, and and I did a, a show with um, Company of Giants. Do you know them through one one six anyway? Yeah, through, okay. Yeah. yeah, I have heard a company of giants. Yeah, yeah, and we um, I, I didn't I didn't do any drag in that, but um, we uh toured, toured it, so we took oh, it wow. to Gisborne hey. and um and Gizzy. Wellington, yeah, yeah, along, nice. alongside an um an art exhibition actually uh, in Wellington. Yeah. Well, it, the art exhibition moved. Oh, so, so it was you, in wow. Whangarei. We did the show alongside it. Yeah. 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 Oh man, that would have been a hell of an experience. Yeah, it was really cool. So, and did that sort of reignite the the love and the passion again? And then, how has that kind of progressed from when you got back into it to the wonderful Victor <laughs> that's in front of us now? Yeah, well, I think, um, yeah, I think developing the character and just kind of making it my own and yeah, um, yeah. Because I, I looked up on YouTube a, a couple of things about beards and whatnot, but then most of what I've what I've done and created, I've just sort of has been developed by me over over time. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, just like I said, the first like Hans he ha, him Hans he him is what I called myself when I first started developing Hans this. he him. Yeah, Hans. Like just a male version of Hanareki, you yeah, know, yeah. and then yeah, he him like the pronouns, but I made it into a last name. Oh right, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So one drunk drag king once was like, "Is it kind of like 
handsome, like Hans I was like, no, but you keep drinking. <laughs> Look, I'll be honest. We've been doing this for the, over two years now. And it's not a phrase I ever thought I'd actually hear any guest say one drunk drag king. Um, queen. One queen. Drunk, tr- one drunk drag, drag queen. queen. Man, yeah. good luck saying that fast like 12 times. Or drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One drunk drag queen. Wow. So, um, and then... Yeah, and then actually I was away on on a... I was on a sailing trip, a gay sailing trip last week, last year um, for work. I know, cool, day. Eh? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and I was just like, okay, you know, and, I, and I'd taken the opportunity to not bring my phone. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, oh, yeah. going to sleep. How am I going to go to sleep? So I was like, actually, I need a new drag name. I'm going to, like, go through all the different... Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I came up with Victory Dance on a, on a boat. Um, on a sailing ship, Holy rocking, shit. Yeah, <laughs> rocking in the ocean. I, so I would, have, I would have, you know, never thought that there was what, what a, a gay gay sailing trip, gay sailing trip. <laughs> yeah, New Zealand Sailing Trust. Um, I think it was the first time they did it last year, and it was so twenty young people wow. from all over New Zealand yeah, yeah. came together, and yeah, so we went along as like, you know. Gay staff. <laughs> I know nothing about sailing. I didn't have to do that part of it. Right, but yeah, it was like cool. the supporting the young people, you know. Um, so youth yeah, have, work on a boat. Exactly. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Far out. That's cool, man. Um, are you in uh, now? What's the, the youth area? Um, fucking a youth space? No, that's so I'm not there. You're but, not yeah, there. Co- no. Right. Um, yeah, okay. I work for Rainbow Youth. Right, And okay. we've got an office in alongside North and Youth Theatre, actually, um, on John Street. Oh, right. Mm. Uh, I have a very good friend that works for Whangarei Youth Space. She's one of the nurses there. Ah, oh, yep. Ruby. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, she's a good friend. She's yep. very cool. Wow. Man, that's crazy. So, I have to say, it's a hell of a journey. <laughs> from yeah, oh. from lawyer parents <laughs> and flowers yeah. through to you know drag performances yeah and artist I... <laughs> then then you know communion through to community yeah yeah wow <laughs> and um yeah and I've uh I guess in in this creating of the of the drag role like it's like then creating different numbers that you can bring to different places is what I've what I'm finding because I uh, last year I actually I performed the same number in four different places so the first time I did it was down in Wellington right, at yeah. Ivy Bar yeah um yeah and then I was telling a friend about it Vince again um he's involved with the Northern Doll Nor- um yeah the Nor- Northern Dolls now the, is it the Burlesque group mm, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, well, we're di- diversifying. Bring it along. And then they had a, a visiting doll from um, from Tauranga who was like, oh, that number would fit perfectly in our show down there. Oh, so I got nice. to perform it down there too. Wicked, so, man. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Far out. That, I mean, that's a hell of a journey. And just in general. And now you've got this um, amazing character that's you. <laughs> Amplified. Yeah, yeah. And you're going around the country. Yeah. Uh, well, I did last year. That was yeah. That was awesome. Only, but, half, uh, only halfway through this year, <laughs> man. We still got time. Yeah. But that's so cool, man. Is there anything you've got coming up? Um. Well, oh, are you, are you, are you, fringe, 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 fringe. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. The fringe festival is in October. Yeah. In yeah. In the October school holidays. Um. Uh, we've been talking about possibly doing another karaoke soon yeah uh, yeah so whether that's during fringe or before fringe yeah cool. is, is yet to be decided um, nice but yeah the last fringe we did a coming out picnic because the um international coming out day is on october the 11th um which that, falls during yeah, fringe. I was yeah. Gonna say that. doesn't that fall in there wow yeah, so we did um last fringe we did a we did a picnic at putahi yep. park and yeah, like people just came along, dressed up, played games, hung out, ate food. Far um, out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, n- none of those things have been definitely locked in yeah, for this right. fringe, but yeah. we will be doing something because yeah, I'm um, I'm the founder and chairperson for Whangarei Proud. So we, yeah, we um, put on the Whangarei Pride Festival. Oh yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I and believe that was the one near the Lee. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, she told me to come down and I forgot. 
Oh, yeah. And then I felt bad. <laughs> and then she messaged me saying, oh, you're not here. And I was like, yeah, I feel bad enough already. Thanks. Yeah. And we've so we've got a, a building in John Street now, too. So yeah. we're going to be doing more events there throughout the year. Far out. Um, but, yeah, so the Pride Festival is the month of March. Yep. So we'll be starting to plan that again towards, yeah. Yeah, towards the end of the year. We want to give ourselves, like, yeah, six months of planning. Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you do the Pride event, Almost six months later, you've got Fringe. And then sort of almost six months later, you've got... Yeah, but Fringe is every two years. It's every two years, years, eh? Yeah, Yeah. and when we started the Pride Festival, I was like, should we go every two years? And they're like, no, we have to do it every year. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wow, man, that's so cool. You just... Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, uh, we've got Borgalicious. Oh, Oh, no, this... uh, I don't know what, how long. Yeah. How long does it take to t- t- get a podcast out? We've got Boogalicious next w- next week. Nah, nah. <laughs> Let's just say this, man. Boogalicious was amazing. <laughs> yes, sixty seventies, uh, eighties, nineties music. Huge. Oh, really? That's my era. Yeah. Um. So, you, uh, congratulations on having such an amazing event with Boogalicious. <laughs> thank you. That's how we do it. Um. <laughs> But no, um, thank you so much for coming in and sitting down. This has been an absolute blast for me. It's always so cool. Uh, I think as we, as I said before, um, you know, when we were doing sort of the, the, the pre-podcast chat, um, I always learn something. And I definitely felt like I've learned a lot tonight. So, um, Han, thank you very much for coming in and sitting down with us on the North Eyes Conversation, man. It's been awesome. Thank you for having me. Well, there you go, everyone. That was our uh, podcast with Han. Um, super cool. Uh, I, you know, at the end of each podcast, I like to reflect on the uh, on on one thing I learned the most, and you know, um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something really different and really interesting. Uh, Editor Lee, what did you? What were your thoughts out of the podcast? I know you don't have your microphone set up. That's why I'm asking you. So okay. quickly, power your mic on. Come on. That's a get with the program. Um, and then the dial. It's the number three. So it's the third one. Yes, that one there. Then dial it up and then do the talky-talky. Yep. That's a... Oh, Jesus! Editor Lee uh, tries to burst my eardrums should be the title of this podcast. Um, all right, and this is the part where you speak and engage with the audience. So, Editor Lee, what, 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 for you, what was a highlight out of this podcast? Um, I think... No, talking to the microphone. Oh, sorry. Um, talking to the microphone. I'm trying. No, you're not. Lean <laughs> forward. To, do I have to eat it? <laughs> sure. Eat a mic. And if you, I'll um, tell you what, you want to impress me? Chew it. Chew it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good at ASMR, so this is going to sound That's stupid. fine. That's um, it. Tappy tap. At least you're not clicking. Anyway, carry on. Oh, it's hard to pick because I know Han and I just, like, I think that they're an amazing person. So, I, but I thought it was really interesting. I think the cruise. That, that yeah. Was just the sailing, the gay sailing ship thing with the youth group. I thought that was cool. And I yeah. was wondering why wasn't I invited? Man. <laughs> I, I, I liked the karaoke. Yeah. I thought that was such an interesting concept. Um, and just really, really cool. And something that, um, you know, Fung and I could definitely get behind. Oh, absolutely. Um, but then I think the other thing that really interested me the most, and you can you can stop me if I'm wrong, is uh, when they went down to Auckland and essentially lived the Catholic lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, no, because I, I didn't know that personally. So yeah. That so, y- yeah. Just going from, um, you know, sort of uh, drag king up in Whangarei, um, you know, sort of, well, not not drag king, but sort of starting to, I guess, blend those two worlds together. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then going down to Auckland and just almost, you know, putting, like, not, not putting it to one side, but just kind of tabling it. Um, and then focusing on youth work, um, and religion, you know, um, getting married and, and then getting divorced and, you know, a period of time as well. I just, I, I found it really interesting because it was, it was very open and very honest. 
Yeah, that's another great quality of Han. Like they're just very like out there. Yeah, they're yeah. Not afraid to speak their mind, and that's really really cool. Definitely very um, refreshing. And um, you know, as, as I said at the start um, of the podcast, the introduction, um, please do do go check out the Rapid Fire. Um, thank you for that, Editor Lee. Wonderful You're to welcome. hear your voice as always. And you even sang us out like Elvis. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> Where can you? Oh, actually, oh yeah, I flicked my camera. I didn't even say I was going to do it. I'm just doing it. Um, so, where can you, our audience, uh, find more of these podcasts? Well, um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, all North and Artist Conversation. I'll be scrolling down the bottom here. Uh, well, not scrolling, just flashing. Um, and for uh, audio, we're on uh, Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, Google Podcasts is no more. It's being migrated across to YouTube. Um, so we'll update all of that information as well. I think it's YouTube Podcasts as well. But yeah, we're on YouTube as it is for video anyway. So it's kind of cool, right? Um you know, and if you're an artist, uh, we would love to have you on the show. Even if you've been on once, we would still love to have you back on again because um, people, you know, when we have a guest on the first time, you know, sometimes when they come back on the second time, things might have changed for them. So, um, you know, if, you, uh, if you'd love to be on or you want to come back on or if you know someone that you think should be on here, um, please email us. Uh, the email address is hello at northernartistconversation.co.nz. It'll be down the bottom here somewhere. I don't know, about there, maybe? Actually, my fingers are about right. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we, uh, you know, before I say this next one, I'm going to flick to my Y camera. Um, I want to thank everyone for continuing to watch these podcasts, uh, download these podcasts as well. Um, man, you know, we're starting to see some, um, you know, we're starting to see the biggest numbers we've had um, ever. So it's very, very cool. Really appreciate it. It's, um, it's lovely to see. Um, you know, and if you want to support, make sure you follow us on the socials, um, leave comments <clears throat> and, um, you know, just, just engage with us, man. You know, we'd love to hear from you. We've been doing this for, for a couple of years now and, um, you know, we've had a lot of fun along the way. We continue to learn new things. So, you know, in saying that, learn with us, join us as, um, we discover the amazing talent that is, uh, in Northland, New Zealand, um, and some of the very cool people that come into Northland, uh, and share some of their, uh, creative, uh, journey with us. My name is Mark Kelly on behalf of the, uh, Northland Artist Conversation team. Um, thank you very much for stopping by, checking us out. Um, we will see you guys real soon. <laughs>